I'll tell you something. There's some YouTubers that I watch. I still watch them, but there's a few things they do that kind of annoy me. You know, they try to tell you, like, how to ride. Uh, and it's not necessarily that they're telling you, like, how to ride because it'll keep you safe. It's more like they're just, they're just telling you how to ride because that's the way that they ride. You know, the way they place their feet, the way they place their hands and their fingers on the, on the levers and, you know, how to, like, lean. And I mean, lean, yeah, you need to know how to lean, but I, I saw one guy, he didn't have a lot of followers or anything, so. He was, like, essentially saying, like, you are better off to lean off of the side of the bike, even if you're not leaned over really far. You know, he's basically saying hanging off the side of the bike is beneficial because you can take turns a little faster, even if you're not completely in a full lean. And it's like, okay, well, that's terrible advice because then you're going to have some kid you know, who's going to look at that and go, oh, okay, so I can take turns faster hanging off the side of my bike. And then he's going to do it for the first time going to a turn way too fast. And pew, here he goes. Just ride the way that's comfortable for you and the safest way for you. I mean, you know, you can listen to some of these guys and take little notes from each one. You yeah, know, but these guys are like real bullheaded about, you know, the proper way to place your feet on pegs. It's like, yeah, that works when you're on track. But when you're on the street, most of the time it doesn't matter. Not unless you got like your legs out in front of you like this. Don't do that. But you're talking about proper placement on the pegs. Like just ride with whatever's comfortable and the safest. It doesn't really matter as long as you're being safe. But I mean, I've, I've seen a couple other ones you were talking about. The gear that you wear and like you know basically saying you know if you wear this gear you might as wear no gear because it's just no good you're better off with nothing well that's not true even crappy gear is still better than no gear at all because at least you have somewhat a, of a little bit of protection you know if you're wearing like a cheap helmet you know, hitting your head off the ground on a cheap helmet is still better than just hitting your head straight off the ground with no helmet. Or like, you know, the type of gloves that you wear. I've worn crappy, low-budget gloves before. They're still better than nothing. So I've looped out with them before and they held up just fine. Granted, I was going very slow in a, in a parking lot doing wheelies, you know, but I landed and caught myself on my hands, and uh, they held up just fine. So, yeah, that whole, like, wearing this gear, you might as well as wear no gear, that's not true. Do what's comfortable, do what's within your budget, but just wear gear at least coming from someone who's actually had like a real accident. I've had like one real accident, you know, with this bike. And it, it wasn't even all that bad, really. But I had all my gear on. I landed on my shoulder, messed up my shoulder for a while. Only got a couple scratches on the bike. You know, the bike was pretty much almost completely fine. Oh, look at the pupper. But yeah, going down on the street like that, had all my gear on, my shoes, my pants, my gloves, my helmet, my jacket, all that stuff. And I think that played a big part into why I was pretty fine. I mean, I hurt my shoulder, but I didn't have anything broken or old or torn or anything. That was good. I was just really, really sore for a couple weeks. Actually, speaking of gear, I'm wearing my summer gear today. It is currently 53 degrees, and I'm beginning to regret this. I am cold. I should have worn my other, my other winter gear. Eat your bike, boy. Man, I need to wash this thing. I think I got this in like May. 
I don't remember. But uh, yeah, I've literally never washed this bike. I've never done any cleaning to it whatsoever. The entire time that I've had this. And now it's all dusty and dirty and covered in bugs. Can you consider those a bike, those slingshots? Are those really a bike? I don't know. I think in Illinois, you actually have to wear a helmet if you're uh, driving one. I think they consider it a motorcycle in Illinois. I don't consider it a motorcycle. Just because you're missing a wheel doesn't automatically make it a motorcycle. I mean, you can get them in a manual transmission, just like a car. Get your little gear shift over here, and then the clutch at your foot. I mean, they're kind of cool because I saw one where someone did a conversion to four wheels. And uh, I think he put an LS in it. It was freaking awesome. Yeah, it was a little chilly, but it was bearable. It was okay. It was supposed to be like 70 something degrees this week. I guarantee I'm probably gonna be in my truck and I'm not gonna get to enjoy any of that. I might enjoy it, I'll just be enjoying it from a different state. And I don't wanna do that. Hey, look at this guy. Aprilia, baby. That thing is freaking sick. Those things are so freaking cool. I was just kind of admiring it. And I forgot to talk and I forgot that I was even recording. Wonder if he's gonna follow me in. Yeah, he is. We're gonna check this thingy out. I don't know what kind of Aprilia that is, though. But it freaking looks nice. Hey, you coming to the gym, baby. Oh, hey, man, there's uh, somebody else. Another ZX6R. Hell yeah. Where'd old boy go? Oh, I thought he was going to park up here with me. I thought he was pulling in behind me. Maybe I was wrong. Oh, there he is. He parked up front. I have seen a couple sport bikes out today though, that's pretty cool. I think that was the guy, same guy yesterday with the BMW. Well, I met old Aprilia boy. See, he wasn't even going to the gym, he was actually just rolling in to try to catch up with me. He said he just moved to town. Uh, I didn't catch where from, but he said he just moved to town. And, um, he didn't really know anyone who rode. So, you know, he saw me on the road and he was like, hey, let's check out this guy. Rolled in, talked to him, you know, for a little bit. And then the other guys that were right there at the gym, they rolled up too. He was like, oh yeah, we, we should all go ride. And if you know those guys, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't think they're interested in riding with uh, two guys who are a little older. So he seemed like he was very mature for his age. He looked like he might have been younger, but he was, extremely mature very well-spoken guy and uh, I, I was just kind of like I don't think those guys are really gonna be interested like they're cool dudes yeah but they're you know 21 and 22 I think they already look at me as like the old guy and that's fine you know I'm 10 years older than them so understandable but uh, I mean he seemed like a pretty cool dude the nice Aprilia that he had there. Um, he said he didn't even really know anything about the bike. He just kind of got it because he liked the way that the bike sounded. So he just went ahead and got it. And I was like, yeah, dude, you got like the Lamborghini of motorcycles, I guess. Because, you know, I would say Ducati is kind of the, uh, the Ferrari of motorcycles which leaves Aprilia to be like the Lamborghini of motorcycles, maybe? I don't know. That's how I kind of look at it. Of course, BMW is just the BMW of motorcycles because it's BMW. They have cars. You know, when I was in high school, 
guess I never really thought too much about it because I always thought it was like the the weird kids would go to those trade uh, I guess programs trade schools you're like a junior I was like ah that's for the weird kids man I wish I would have done that See, I've seen pretty recently some of these uh like guys who went into trades and learned how to do stuff, you know, electricians, plumbers, um, mechanics, you know, stuff like that, end up becoming their own business. You know, they end up becoming business owners. And man, these guys are making a lot of freaking money, home all the time, you know, the just all of the freedom because they have their own business and now I'm like looking back because I didn't want to do that and I was like I don't want to go to a trade school that's where all the weird kids go and then I was now looking back I'm like man I should have gone to trade school those kids weren't weird they were smart they knew that you know if you learn the trade now you know by the time they're you know 22 23 years old you know, they'll have enough experience to be able to just go start their own business. Like now I'm in my 30s. I'm like, man, I should have done that. I mean, I have, you know, your blue collar kind of job. I'm a truck driver, but not really a whole lot you can really do with that these days as far as trying to start a business because like the market's so freaking saturated with trucking companies good luck trying to start one and be successful there's just so many and it's gotten to the point where like all the all the companies that you're gonna be picking up from and doing deliveries for and all that you know they're just using the big guys anymore anyway you know the larger trucking companies you know they have way better insurance and way more reliability because they got so many drivers you know, if, if, like, one driver doesn't show up, you know, they'll have another driver in the area who can go and pick something up. You know, so you just got more reliability out of these, like, large, giant companies. You know, so they're just using those anymore. So trying to start your own little small business, good luck. I mean, maybe if you're, like, an owner-operator and you just have your own truck and trailer, probably do that. But then, you know, there's all the all the problems with that because if you if you got a breakdown you know you don't have another truck so you're losing a lot of money by not working and you're spending a lot of money to get your truck fixed and these days everything's very expensive you just don't make as much as what you used to because you got to put it all back into your company essentially if, like even if you're an owner operator you you you're technically a company so you're putting it all back into your company so, just kind of better off working for a company. I mean, actually, I I make more money than a good chunk of owner operators. When you look at like what the, what they actually take home, not not what their company makes, you know, because they'll say, "Oh, I made three hundred thousand." It's like, no, you didn't. Your company made three hundred thousand. But anyway, that's my little rant. Okay, love you. Bye.